So things just got really interesting in the Miller v. Bonta assault weapons ban case in the state of California. In that, the state of California has just filed an emergency stay and plaintiffs are opposing that. So let's talk about this. But real quick, before we jump into this video, if you think that the state of California needs to stop infringing on our Second Amendment rights, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to give a shout out to one of the main sponsors of the channel, that is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you look into USCCA, and I'll put a link to them down in the details section. So like I said in the intro, the state of California has filed their emergency motion for a stay, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, and the plaintiffs have filed their opposition to that emergency motion. If you're not familiar, last week, I think it was on June 10th, the state of California officially put out their notice of an appeal that they were going to appeal the lower court's decision in Miller v. Bonta, which dealt with California's assault weapons ban case, and St. Benita's in that situation found that California's assault weapons ban was indeed unconstitutional. State of California didn't like that, Newsom didn't like that, a ton of people didn't like that nationwide, there was a lot of complaining about that, and so the state of California is appealing it, and they are also seeking now a motion for a stay because what Judge Benitez did is he put a 30-day uh, temporary stay on his own judgment, which is set to actually terminate on July 4th, which would mean if July 4th comes and goes without the state of California getting a stay from the higher court from the Ninth Circuit, that would mean residents in the state of California could then go out, uh, purchase, manufacture, import what the California state has prior deemed to be so-called assault weapons. So first and foremost, let's cover what the state of California sought in their stay. And like you heard me say, they sought an emergency stay. For the most part, what the state of California argued is they said that they want the Ninth Circuit motion panel or a Ninth Circuit panel to review this motion for a stay, this emergency motion for a stay by June 18th of 2021. And here's why the state of California is saying there is a so-called emergency and why the Ninth Circuit needs to review this now and review their motion for an emergency stay. They state that defendants respectfully request that the court act on this motion by June 18th of 2021. So that in the event that a three judge panel just denies any stay, there is time for defendants to seek further relief from the en banc court or the Supreme Court in advance of the July 4th effective date set by the district court. And so what I gathered from the state's emergency motion is that they are arguing that the Ninth Circuit needs to review this now, just in case the uh, motions panel denies their stay, they want time to actually seek review of that denial by an en banc panel in the Ninth Circuit or by the Supreme Court before the July 4th timeline ends. And this is all revolving around that July 4th um, order that Judge Benitez has put in place running out on that date. And then they go on to argue their point of why they think a stay should be granted. And they pretty much argue that the stay should be granted because um, this is going to cause irreparable harm to the state of California. There needs to be a maintenance of the status quo here in the state uh, pending the appeal. So pretty much they're just arguing what you would expect them to say. They also reference Duncan in their motion saying that the whole Freedom Week thing led to millions of magazines coming into the state of California and they don't want the same thing happening here. So that is kind of the whole point of why they're arguing there should be a stay pending appeal in this specific case, Miller v. Bonta. The state of California also argues that an administrative stay should be given in two different situations. They say administrative stay should be given just in case the Ninth Circuit cannot hear this motion before July 4th. They say that there should be a kind of temporary stay also put in place, maybe even beyond the July 4th until the Ninth Circuit can actually hear this motion that they're putting forward. And then they also say that an administrative stay should also be granted even if they lose the motion, it should be put in place while they actually seek a review of that decision up to the en banc panel or the Supreme Court. So I know there's a whole lot going on here and I know a lot of you might be confused, but just understand the state of California is doing a lot in this emergency motion for a stay. They want review by the Ninth Circuit by June 18th, and that is because they're saying if they lose, they're going to seek additional review of that motion up to a higher court. Along with that, they are seeking just a traditional stay pending appeal. They're hoping that when this court, this Ninth Circuit reviews it, they will just grant that traditional stay and put a stay in place for the entire appeal process. Also, what they're seeking is potential administrative stays. And the main takeaway from the state's motion is that they do not want July 4th to happen without them having some sort of a stay. 
whether it be an emergency stay, whether it be an administrative stay, whether it be a review from a higher court and that higher court, an en banc panel of Supreme Court potentially granting the stay. They do not want July 4th to hit without them having a stay because if July 4th comes and goes without the state of California having a higher court stay, that means that Judge Benitez's lower court decision goes into effect and it pretty much reigns freedom in the state of California. And so now let's look at the plaintiff's opposition to the state's emergency stay. And what this is, it is a preliminary and procedural opposition. What the plaintiffs argue here in their preliminary opposition and the procedural opposition is that the immediate stay should be denied, that that emergency stay should be denied, and also that the traditional course of briefing and reviews of this motion should actually be adhered to instead of this emergency stay review and all this. So like I said, the state of California is saying there is an emergency and that they should be reviewed on an emergency basis, not because it can't be reviewed within 21 days, but potentially because they want to appeal up to a higher court if their motion is denied and they want to seek that review before July 4th. Um, and so in the plaintiff's opposition, they state that under their rationale as expressed, any party could claim an emergency simply by claiming that they need or intend to seek en banc review or review in the Supreme Court should their motion be denied. In plaintiff's opposition, they also point out that the June 18th date is pretty arbitrary and the state of California doesn't put forward a rationale or a basis of why they picked that June 18th date of why this needs to be reviewed or by when this needs to be reviewed by the Ninth Circuit. They don't put forward a rationale, they just pick June 18th, They'll just leave it out there and don't put forward any basis for that. And then to go further in the plaintiff's preliminary opposition and procedural opposition, they state that the traditional briefing should be adhered to primarily because if all the procedures were to play out in the traditional basis under the rules that would mean that all briefing would be completed at least by june 27th which is before the july 4th deadline and so the plaintiff in their opposition is saying there is no basis why the state of california is saying that they needed this to be reviewed right here and now when if you followed the traditional track everything would be reviewed into the court by June 27th. And the main thing to take away from the plaintiff's opposition is that procedurally the state of California is not adhering to the rules. They are not putting forward a valid basis of why this is an emergency and needs to be reviewed now, and that this could actually be reviewed according to the traditional track. Now, after the motion for a stay and the opposition were filed, there was also a court docket entry that hit, and I will read that to you right now. What this states is that the court has received appellant's emergency motion for a state pending appeal. The response to that motion is due by 9 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday, June 15th, 2021. The optional reply in support of the motion is due 9 a.m. Pacific time on Wednesday, June 16th of 2021. The existing briefing schedule remains in effect. So for that last thing, just real quick, the existing briefing schedule remains in effect. Um, there is a briefing schedule for the like overall track of the appeal that was submitted prior. They're saying that that's gonna stay the same. Doesn't really, I don't think, affect this whole state issue, but what does affect this whole state issue is what you heard there was some of those deadlines that were put forward, which are next week. So I know a lot of you are gonna ask me now, where does this leave us? And this leaves us uh, pretty much where the court said it did in their docket entry. Plaintiffs can file their full opposition to the state's emergency motion by June 15th, and then the state of California can have an optional reply the next day on June 16th. And then I'm assuming maybe that the court is going to try to review this by June 18th, and maybe that's why they're doing this. And even beyond that, what both sides are now signaling is that even if either side loses, they're going to seek a review of that decision by the motions panel on whether or not the state should be granted or denied. They're going to seek review of that up to the higher courts, either up to the en banc panel or the Supreme Court. So the reason why this whole stay thing is really happening in this battle for this kind of procedural stay and, and why this is happening right here now is because of Judge Benitez's order and the fact that it runs out on July 4th. The state of California does not want July 4th to hit without there being a stay and the plaintiff in their opposition wants the July 4th time period to come and go without there being a stay. I hope this added some clarity to you guys on what's going on right now with the stay in Miller v. Bonta and the whole battle that is going on in regards to that stay. Of course, this is not the gospel. I'm not saying that this is 100% correct, especially with this. There's a whole lot of procedural uh, nuance to this. If I need to correct anything, if I get any more information, I will definitely let you guys know. But just understand this is a huge battle that's going on right now and both sides are signaling that depending on what happens, 
happens, they are still going to seek and battle for these stays um, up to the higher courts, either up to the en banc review or either up to Supreme Court. And when I say that they're going to seek review, I mean they're seeking review specifically on the stay on whether or not it should be granted or denied. So next week, as we get more information, I will definitely let you guys know. But if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you guys like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure that notification bell because that helps the channel analytics, helps us spread the word about the Second Amendment, and helps spread the word about 2A news like this that is going on in California and in the US. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars. This nation will be maintained by armed scholars.